Hi again, it's Chrissy for part two of this team building brief. So we talked about the circle of trust and communication and how to kind of make a team feel really self-maintained um, and feel like they are um, really and have a sense of belonging within the team. And that's through regular trust and communication um, set by the leadership. Now you can also start to lead up and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the last um, section of this brief. If you feel like you are working for um, a leader who is not maintaining trust and communication, there are some strategies that you can use to, um, to send that up. And one of them is basically all relationships are built on open trust and respect. And sometimes that means just showing trust and respect when you're not receiving it um, back. Um, kind of like some of the deal escalation tactics we talk about with suicide prevention and with anger management and conflict resolution, like the kill them with kindness. Sometimes showing something to someone when you don't receive it can sometimes provide that opposite effect. It can disarm someone and then have them be um, attracted to what, what you're doing and then offer that trust and communication. So I just want to say that, that, and I've been in situations like that, not in my current job, but in my previous work where I didn't feel like there was communication or trust and there were ways that I was able to get that for myself by asking the appropriate questions at the appropriate time. So think about how you can implement that. So one of the other issues that pro that leaders might have is it would uh, open communication, having an open door policy. These are some of the things we talk about with the civilian sector. So your CO suggestion box, if you have one of those in your command, that's one of the ways that the CO is asking for you to provide um, suggestions and um, any concerns that you have without feeling like you need to go through your chain. So um, consider using that if that's something that you can um, that you have at your command. The other thing is that having the appropriate direction for the organization is a leader's role as well, providing the purpose, providing the why. Um, one of the things that leaders can become bogged down with is understanding when people come to you with a problem what your next steps can be so it can be very um it can be understanding how you can leaders can get into a tetris type mind and yet that's a, actually a really interesting study if you have time to read it um put students in the room for uh during the study for three hours playing tetris and then their mind just sort of saw the world in tetris shapes so what might happen with a leader's mind is that someone comes to me with a problem and I just whack-a-mole, solve the problem. Next one comes in, solve the problem. Say, next one comes in, I come in and solve the problem. So let's think too about, because some people ne might need a lot of help with their problem and it might become a problem that the leader owns, or it might actually be a problem that someone just needs guidance and or suggestion or maybe just support. So we want to think too about how much autonomy um, workers have that we're providing that for them and that we're providing regular processes to help support people who might need more support but then let people go who might need to have um, might need to go through a process to figure out the best way to go forward so the question that I'm gonna pose to you and this is the question I suggest asking yourself when as a leader and all of you are leaders in some respect or will be very soon Ask yourself who owns the problem. And the, the question most likely is either gonna be them, that problem is not leading, is not with me, the leader, it's with them, the other entity, or the leader, the problem is with me, myself. So when the problem is with them, the person who comes in, we are going to offer support. And I'll give you an example of that. So when the, somebody comes in and that is actually their problem, we offer support. So that might look like, for example, um, someone comes in with a problem and they need additional leave because they are going through marital problems and they need to probably reach out to an additional organization. So that is actually a problem that they own. CEOs and leadership and um, officers in charge are not in charge of helping them fix their marriage problems, but they can do what they need to do on their end, like give them the leave that they need or provide them with a referral to chaplains for counseling or fleet and family or military one source for additional couples communication classes or um, credo, like if you don't know what credo is, that's a great place that does marriage retreats or individual retreats. 
Um, so we're going to offer them some support through additional services and then whatever is needed at the command level. But unless you are a licensed marriage and family therapist, you shouldn't be decompressing all of those problems with them. That doesn't mean you can't offer a listening ear if that's something you want to do. But for example, if someone comes into my office and has marital problems or my friends in general, I'm not a licensed marriage and family therapist. I teach couples communication so I can talk about some tools and ideas with um, couples communication, but I cannot therapize with them. I cannot become a therapist because that's not my role. So I'm going to listen. I'm going to empathize with them by saying that sounds like a difficult situation. I'm sorry that that's something you're going through. Um, but, and I would use, I use myself as an example a lot. I've had marital problems. I've had marital miscommunication. I went and got help through this, that, and the other, and it worked for me. All right. So think about if it, the problem truly resides with them, you want to offer support. The thing is, if you if you become the helper for every problem that doesn't belong to you, you actually dwarf people's ability to grow. They can't go through the process of figuring out how to solve it with um, because you won't actually be there for every time and you don't want them to come to you with every problem. So like think too, like I'm a parent, um, my son doesn't know how to tie his shoes, he wants me to tie his shoes every time. At some point I'm going to say, all right, I showed you how to do it, we talked about it. You watched the YouTube video on how to tie your shoes. Now you try, okay? So think about that too, the way we can support people when the problem resides with them. Now let's talk about when the problem actually resides with me. So let's give a work example. Say that I'm actually in charge of a kitchen or a galley on a ship, okay? The oven breaks. Someone comes to me and says, the oven breaks. So at that point, that problem resides with me because it's under my area of jurisdiction. It's in my swim lane. Um, that's, that's, where, that's where the problem resides. So I offer guidance in that situation. Let's get that person. Let's go down and talk to the people that fix the ovens. Um, let's get involved with engineering. Let's get involved with electrical. Whatever needs to happen. So we're going to offer guidance and I'm going to take on that responsibility. So if I think about another personal example, uh, so my son has food allergies and it's important that he takes his EpiPen places. Well, he's not quite old enough to remember to do that every time. So I'm continuing to offer guidance for him because if he doesn't have his EpiPen and he has an allergic reaction, the result is death. So we're talking about things when it's like imminent danger, um, other things that, you know, broken processes where you're responsible, something bad could happen. Um, think about going back to this as well. So for, with, my, with my situation, I'm helping my son understand how, what, how important bringing his EpiPen is places, but ultimately I'm responsible for that because it's a life and death situation and I'm the parent in that situation. I'm in charge, I'm the leader. Uh, helping if my son has a problem with one of his friends, not sharing the, not being able to play basketball nicely, I'm gonna offer some support. I'm not gonna get in there and tell the other kids, you better share the ball with my son. I'm sick and tired of your bull, loney, and um, get out of my house. I'm going to offer some support there and try and help him understand how to get along. Now there are other situations where um, problems are shared within a command or within a unit. And that would be where we need to maybe involve other people or other entities. Like, so if we have a shared problem on the ship that has to do with, I don't know, let's say like flight schedule and, and someone needs to get this qualification, but that plane is down and it needs this other part, that's where the problem is really going to become shared. So this is just a simple um, way to remember when you need to offer support and when you need to offer guidance. The last thing I want to talk about with regards to who owns the problem is that at Fleet and Family, we have a wellness screener. Um, you can email us or call us and ask for the wellness screener. Our counseling department developed this because we actually had people coming into our office for counseling that didn't really need counseling. And I understand how this happens. If, you, if I was in a leadership position and we have high suicide rates or we have um, a cl command climate survey that says people are feeling emotionally um, overwhelmed and I saw a sailor crying in the corner I would just say go talk to fleet and family go get some help um, go talk to a therapist 
Well, what was happening though sometimes is that people were feeling overwhelmed, but they couldn't necessarily determine why they were feeling overwhelmed. So the wellness screener has several uh, questions and it's just two pages. Um, and on the first part, you can kind of ask a series of questions and rate yourself um, where you are in the operational stress continuum. And then on the back, we have resources that we can refer them to. So that just helps us, you know, if you go down and talk to someone in counseling and you've been crying because you, uh, you have a lean out because you haven't been paying your bills, um, going to talk to a therapist might be helpful, but really we're probably gonna feel much better and much less in the red zone after we have resolved our uh, financial um, stressors. And we can help with that at Fleet and Family. All right, one more and I'll see you back for the next one.